Hello friends, in this one I'm going to show you how to find the real part of 1 over z squared. Z, in this context of step number 2, remember, is a complex number, so it's x plus yi. So the first stage is to replace z with x plus yi in that expression 1 over z squared. So it gives you above my head there 1 over x plus yi and the whole quantity is squared. I have pre-written this just because it's too much to try to write in real time. It's easy to make a mistake too. <laughs> So let's go on to step 4. We're going to follow from the bottom of step 3. So back at step 3 here, remember, I have x plus yi and is squared. So I need to FOIL that. So it's going to be x plus yi times x plus yi. So it's going to give me the following. The x times the x will give me the x times x term. Then it's going to be x times yi. That will give me x, yi in that position. Then it's going to be yi times x, which will give me yi, x in that position. And lastly, it's going to be yi times yi, which will give me yi times yi in that position. FOIL, in other words, nothing else. Then I multiply it. So x times x would be x squared. xyi plus yix, that's going to give you 2xyi. And then this is going to be y times y, and then i times i. That's going to give you at the end y squared times i squared. So now notice that right now above my head, it's a positive y squared i squared. But i squared is equal to negative 1. So the next stage is going to give you negative y squared in that position. So it gives you x squared plus 2xyi minus y squared. In other words, I replaced i squared with negative 1 multiplied by the positive y squared. And it gave me negative y squared. I'm just going to regroup these. I'm going to group the x squared together with the negative y squared. And then 2xyi will stay separate. I'm doing that because I want to be able to see, for example, that the x squared minus y squared is the real part. And then the 2yx is the imaginary part, essentially. That's the reason for that step. Continue. So at step 5, replace the bottom in 1 over z squared to get 1 over x squared minus y squared plus 2yxi. What we need to do now is look at this bottom here, and we need to multiply this entire fraction above my head by the ratio of the complex conjugates of the bottom. So you're going to change that sign only in the middle above my head, where right now it's a plus. When you form the complex conjugate, you're going to make a minus, that's all. So multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the bottom. It's going to be as follows, 1 over x squared minus y squared plus 2yxi. I just grouped the x squared and the y squared within a parentheses. You can do that. It's the real part, essentially, of the bottom there expression. And then, then I'm going to multiply as follows by x squared minus y squared. Stop for a second. Notice this sign above my head between the squares is the same as this sign above my head between the squares. That doesn't change. This sign between them, right here, between the real and imaginary parts of the bottom, that does change. So notice that above my head in that position it's a negative. But here above my head it's a positive, you see? So make sure you change only the middle sign. So you're going to do x squared minus y squared minus 2yix, 2yxi rather, sorry. And then the same thing in the top, x squared minus y squared minus 2yxi. So you're multiplying by this ratio, which remember, Despite appearances, it's just a number one. Continue. So now notice back here, this product has to be found in the bottom, the product of the bottoms. So take a look. It's going to be x squared minus y squared plus 2y xi multiplied again by x squared minus y squared minus 2y xi. Look for a pattern. The pattern is the difference of squares pattern. And I know that because, you see, this is x squared minus y squared. This is x squared minus y squared. Those pieces match. Then you have 2yxi, but here you have negative 2yxi. So they're, they're different only in the signs between the terms. So I'm going to apply the difference of squares pattern, which says that I'm going to put the first piece, x squared minus y squared, I'm going to square that. And I'm going to subtract from it the square of the second piece, which would be 2yxi squared. Now we can multiply things out a little bit. You see, up here above my head, there's a 2 in the exponent. You can distribute it to the 2 in the bottom here and the y, and the x, and the i individually. So it's going to give you the following. Negative 4 times y squared times x squared times i squared. <laughs> At the next point, take a look. i squared, again, is equivalent to negative 1. So that's as, it's as if you replaced i squared with negative 1. You multiply by that negative on the 4, and that's going to give you positive 4. So the next stage here becomes x squared minus y squared, that quantity squared, as for now. And then it becomes positive for y squared x squared for that reason. I hope you've got all of that. Step 8. Expand and combine terms and denominator from step 7 above. So we have the following. x squared minus y squared quantity squared. 
plus 4y squared x squared. I'm going to foil things out a little bit. So what I mean is x squared minus y squared squared. That has to be multiplied out with foil, basically. When I do that, it's going to give me x to the fourth minus 2x squared y squared plus y to the fourth plus 4y squared x squared. That's why I have this pre-written, because trying to do this in real time can be tricky. <laughs> and now observe something. The x to the fourth stays, and the, let's see, y to the fourth also stays. So over here above my head, I have x to the fourth as a separate term. Then I have y to the fourth at the end as a separate term. But I combine the middle terms. And I do that because, take a look. You see, I have negative 2x squared y squared plus 4y squared x squared. It's the same two terms because the variable parts are the same. That's going to give me 2y squared x squared in the middle. But now I observe something important, that I can be condensed as follows. Take a look. So in other words, we write the result from step 8 as a perfect squared trinomial. So I'm rewriting the x to the fourth as x squared squared. The middle will stay as 2y squared x squared. And the end I'm rewriting as y squared to the second. Because now I see that the following is true. In the middle term, I have an x squared from the first term. In the middle term, I have a y squared from the last term. And I also have that 2 as a coefficient. I'm sorry, that's telling me it's a perfect square trinomial. So I can factor it and then condense it as x squared plus y squared quantity squared. That's all. So now, place the numerator from step 6 above a result from step 9. Let's be careful. So step 6, where are we? Step 6 is this numerator above my head. x squared minus y squared minus 2yxi. And I'm going to put that above the result from step 9, which is x squared plus y squared quantity squared. So I'm putting that over here as follows. x squared minus y squared minus 2yxi over x squared plus y squared quantity squared. Lastly, once we are at step 10 here, you can just separate the real and imaginary parts pretty easily. So x squared minus y squared can be put over x squared plus y squared quantity squared as the real part of the number. So that's below me x squared minus y squared below me, x squared plus y squared quantity squared. Separate that away. And anything with an i, like this part above me, that becomes negative 2yx, also would be then put over that x squared plus y squared quantity squared. So imaginary part is the one with the i, in other words, but in, so it becomes negative 2yx over x squared plus y squared quantity squared. Just when you do this part here, don't actually put the i as part of that. It's not. Just this part, and that's it. Well, that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. I will see you in another video.